know, Colin, I'm really excited. We've flown up here with Hearst Air to, to one of their outpost camps for Trophy Pike. I'm looking at the lake, there's so much to fish here. I know, it is fantastic. With any luck, we'll be able to get them on top water. But you know the thing is, we gotta figure it out. We gotta figure out where these fish are. We don't know. We know there's lots of fish here, but do we use floating lines, sink tips, full sinking lines, big flies, little flies, dark flies, light flies. We have to figure it out, but that's half the fun and the challenge. But the biggest thing is, we have the whole lake to ourselves. That's right. Nobody else will be here but us. And what's even better, we've got to do it yourself. We're gonna have a great week. We can sleep in, we can have lunch when we want, we can have a nap in the afternoon, and go out for an evening fish, and do whatever we want. All that on this episode of The New Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products. Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. This week, host Colin McEwen and Bill Spicer drive to Hearst, Ontario to visit Hearst Air Service. They offer a wide variety of fishing opportunities at remote outposts that are accessible only by air on some of the most pristine lakes Northern Ontario has to offer. Each lake has its own unique characteristics. Our destination is Napkin Lake, 158 miles from the airbase. The two main species targeted are monster northern pike and Ontario walleye. We are here early in the season as that's the best time to target big pike in the shallows. As the ice melts and open water appears, pike look for some of the shallowest water they can find. When locating early season pike, look for shallow, soft bottom bays that lose ice and warm up the quickest. Back bays with large flats that have around three feet of water with weeds would be a prime area to start. It's also where a lot of bait migrate to and pike will follow. Ooh. So, of course, I just told the cameraman to put the camera away because it's raining. And I cast in, and I think I toward shore. We're in a bay here. Bill and I are looking for these post-spawn fish, and I, my fly just got hammered. It's not a bad fish at all. The first fish, oh yeah. I'm using a nine weight rod here. Pretty much need it. Yep. Combination of casting the flies and... Oh, that. that is a nice fish. Look at it go. <laughs> That's one thing about pike, eh, Colin? They never give up. Nope. <laughs> you gotta get him up. Yep. I'm trying to. This water is stained. Oh, look at that. It's not a giant, but it's not bad. It's a good start. All right. 
Oh yeah, Bill. <laughs> it's cold up here, but it's, a, it's the first part of the season. The fish are just spawned. Now they're out searching for food. They're hungry, it's been a long winter. You go like this, you just caught it right in the corner. Barbless. Oh, isn't that good? Look yeah. at that. Came right out. Barbless hooks. It's a nice big thick oh, female. Man, that, that is a very nice fish, Colin. <laughs> very nice fish. <laughs> yes. Look how thick that is. Yeah. Big yeah. Fish. All right, let this one go. So one of the things uh, that's important for the pike fishing, very similar to salt water, is that, let me just cast this fly out, is the position of your rod and the way you set the hook. So what I'm doing is rod tip down and I'm stripping in. And if I feel a hit or line stops, I give a pull and lift up. Some people like to do a side swipe. Personally, I like to do uh, the pull and then go straight up. And I seem to get most of the pike right in the corner of the mouth, the, talking about the big ones. The little ones, for whatever reasons, they always just seem to take it down the gullet, which is why I make these barbless. And we have the uh, long nose pliers with the bigger pike, getting them right in the corner of the mouth. It's perfect. Oh, just had a pull. But key is rod position, set the hook, pull, lift up. Oh, there's a I can't even tell what size he is. Oh, looks, looks decent. Looks decent. It is decent. Oh, I just saw the water boil behind my fly, and I didn't get it, and then hit. Oh, yeah, that's a bigger fish than I thought. Yeah, good fish. I think it barely knows it's hooked. There you go. Ah. One thing about pike. They're not afraid. They'll follow right to the side of the boat. And a lot of times you don't see them. So one technique that I use a lot that works many, many, many times is all of a sudden change direction. Like uh, the minnow's trying to get away. I'll do that again for you. Cast it out. I'm bringing it in. And then change direction. And change direction again. Fish on. It's pulling pretty good. Don't know That's if it's huge. We'll see in a second here. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it, Colin? Yes, I know. <laughs> so we're catching lots of little guys, and then we're getting bigger boys too. That now this is a bigger boy. Is it? Yes, it's now taking it's, uh, a line on me. Need to fight him for a second, or do you want me to get the net for you? I need to fight him for a second, I think. Okay. Now, I usually try to get them on the reel, but this guy has been uh, just going around in circles on me. I haven't had a chance to put it on the reel yet. That's Let's too see bad, you... Bill. It means you're having too much fun. Yeah. I haven't got a look at him yet. It's cold, it's wet, it's wonderful. Yep. There, let's lead him in, and look at that. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Big, thick one, Bill. That's yeah. a 15 pounder. I'll give you these. Thank you. That should pop out easy. It's right at the top of the mouse. That's the nice thing I like about the big fish. Yeah, they turn, they grab and turn. Oh, oh, well, he got away on me there. He's a little slimy. Got the hook out safely. But that fish, that was, that was a good fish. That's we, 15 we, to 20. We found pay dirt. We found pay dirt. The biggest pike take the best locations, so be alert and ready if one area looks particularly good. Also, cast accurately to the side of the cover, not right on it. Spring pike often spook if the fly lands too close. 
but they'll swim quite a distance to hit a well-presented fly. The key to our success today is, yep, finding these warm back bays. They've just finished spawning and they're out feeding with the warm water. And come on, buddy. Oh boy, he's pulling hard. You a good one, Bill? I think so. Yeah, it feels like it, yeah. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> and we're about four feet, five feet of water yeah, here. Yeah, four to five feet of water. This is the one time a year where they are accessible in shallow water. Pike generally, when the water, water warms up too much, they'll go to deep water. And you might want to put him on your reel. There, I'm buddy. thinking that, yeah. Let's, uh, you haven't yeah. even seen him, and he's pulled our boat about 10 feet so far. Yeah. So right now we're uh, hooking about two little pike to every large one. Yeah. So the little ones are the males, and these big ones are the yeah. females. <sighs> Look at this. We're, we're out in the middle of the bay now. Oh, Bill, that's a nice fish. Nice, nice fish. Yeah. Okay. Head up. Got it. Oh, all right. Look at that. Fills <laughs> the net. Look at that. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> there you go. He's affordable. Trophy fish trips, nothing like them. It's just great. So as you can see by the weather out here, I mean, it's the uh, end of May. We're way up north and it's cold and it's rainy and it's cruddy, but we're all warm and we're all dry. Uh, and I guess what I'm trying to emphasize, if you do come up here to Northern Canada, you want to spend the money to have good outer wear and good inner wear. Whether it's the uh, underwear you're wearing, it's the pants, the fleeces, you get good quality. This is where I can't say it enough. I mean, I've froze my butt off a few times by taking cheap things and I've always regretted it. Especially if you want this shield to be of good quality, no matter what name brand you use, just good quality so you don't get wet. There's nothing worse than being cold and wet. And even when you're having great fishing, it's gonna suck. Fish. Yeah, it's not a big one, I don't think. Very nice. It's not a bad size. Not overly huge, but it's a... Yeah, I don't even have to use the net. Yep. So, if the camera can see this, but what I'm gonna do, I can't tell you how important these things are. Just have these, lean over. It's small pike, this is about 25, not uh, 20 inches. Reach over here, let him fly, and shake, and pop tray out. Available at any hardware store. And if you're like me, buy two because I always seem to lose one. <laughs> Hearst Air has seven remote outposts spread over a wide region of Northern Ontario. These outpost cabins are equipped with propane fridges, stoves with ovens, pots and pans, and all the eating and cooking utensils. There are lanterns for light and wood stoves for heat. These outpost cabins are much like true cottages, snug, dry, and cozy. This provides anglers with a true wilderness experience without missing out on the necessities needed for comfort. 
Of equal importance is the fact that you literally have a lake all to yourself or to share with friends or family. That is something remarkably special in this crowded world. We're here, first week of the season that they're open. The ice has only been off about a week. And uh, we're finding the fish in variable moods. When we first got here, they were quite active. So a fast strip was, was needed for them to attack. But yesterday, we ran into a lot of rain, cold, cold weather. And Colin, with, through his experimentation, thought that they were hugging the bottom near in the weeds itself. We actually um, caught some fish that had leeches on them. So they're sitting on the bottom. So we're, we're casting out, letting it sink, and just little poles like this. Nothing fast at all. They're not in a mood to chase. We put it by their, their nose, they'll eat it. But that's the only way. Right now, that's what we're up against. We've got cold front after cold front coming through and it's put them off a little bit. Something hit it again. There it was, it was small. There we go. A little bit about today, you can see it's raining. All last night, it absolutely poured. And we came out this morning, still spinning a bit. See our breath, but we were nice and snuggy. Had a wonderful breakfast, get us warmed up. And there's our first decent fish of the day. Not huge, but it's a good start. That tells me that they've just spawned or they're still spawning. There he goes. There he goes. That one was probably 25 inches. We just gotta go find 40. Yep. 40 <laughs> inches. Even though it's cold, it's wet, we've had a nice breakfast. We had a nice comfortable cabin all night. We got the right gear. We're gonna go get fish. We get a bit of a sunny break here and I'm going to take a minute to talk about fly sizes at this time of year. Uh, generally when uh, we're pike fishing any other time of the year we'd reach for something with double hooks, big profile, lots of color. Well here it, it, this time of year they seem to like something a little smaller. Um, they're sulking, they've just they've just spawned so they're really they're, they're not in a big mood to eat. So uh, I've been using this Murdich Minnow it's about four to five inches long. Uh, it's been working well. Colin's been using Clouser minnows that are in the same size, nothing too big. Uh, the, the, like I said, the fish are sulking, they're laying on the bottom. We're trying to drag it close to them and uh, they seem to, to like it smaller. So as you can see, we're in the midst of another flurry of rain. We moved up the river looking for some walleye to grab for lunch or dinner. And I swung a fly through the current. And when it came through the edge, somebody was waiting for the walleye. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Get him, Bill. Oh, yeah. Nice job. And that. That fish is down the edge of the current. As I swung it out, I felt the weight. He smacked that fly. Because that's what he's doing to the walleye coming down the river after spawning.
So I just want to talk quickly in between rain showers. You can see I'm wet again. Bill's in the bow casting about the leader and uh, uh, tippet we're using for pike fishing. So I've, this is a sink tip I have on right here. It's really simple, really simple. I like to use 40 to 50 pound uh, stiff mono and we use four to six feet. Uh, this is a, on the sink tip, I like to use a four foot. And then on the floating lines, I used to use, uh, like to use six to eight feet of this very stiff mono. It helps you turn over the fly. And then again, loop to loop, wire leader, and we're using a knotable wire leader so I can put on a good loop knot like that. And I'm using a reel, which is a good, there's other manufacturers out there where reel is a good one. Key is this 30 pound, I'm able to land 25 pound pike no problem with this 30 pound. You can go to 40 if you're worried, but 20 or 30 pounds is what I find works well. And one of the things I wanna mention here is when you're using this uh, bite wire and you don't want to use nippers. I've seen people trying to cut it. You'll destroy the nippers blades. What you need to get a pair of scissors like this because they are made for cutting wire. They're only like five dollars and just go like that. Give it a little cut. Very simple. And while I've got that fly off, the other thing that is really important in all fishing and even here with these big pike using a hook home. Again, another thing to put in your zinger, well, make sure that you get those fish to the net. Well, Bill, that point right yeah. there produced. It just got a little guy. It's in the real, well, that's well, not no, bad this fish. is a decent fish. So he did a run, as soon as I hooked him, he went from the shoreline yeah. right out here into the bay. And Bill and I just found some warm water, which is what they're looking for. Okay, let me get his head up. Yep. Okay, head up. This, this would be a female doing a good job with this nine weight rod. Oh. And we got it. This is, uh, the length isn't as long as we thought, but they're thick. They're, this is heavy fish. That's a good fish. Got That's a, few, a good fish in anybody's got, mind. Got a few marks on it from spawning. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And this is probably the smallest we got. This one's yeah, 30 this, inches. Yeah, that's a small fish for us. Which, nice way yeah, to start it's, the day. It's a good fish. Yeah. One of the things I find it's really important to bring on a trip like this for pike is several different fly lines. The most important one is your floating line. And I'm a big proponent of these pike and musky taper lines. They're fantastic. They have a really aggressive short head and it helps us easily cast heavy flies, wind resistant flies in the wind. And we don't have any wind here, but I'll tell you, I can easily just pick up the fly like this, go one false cast and then boom, shoot that fly out easily. The other thing is that we want to bring some other lines in case the fish go deep. We've got some 15 foot sink tips, which are really handy, uh, type threes to type fives, and that's the sink rate of the sink tip. And of course, the other thing we sometimes bring is a full sinking line, which can be necessary in early time of the year in case the fish go deep and they're on the edges. Right now we're in a bay that yesterday was producing lots of fish, we're not seeing them. And it could be they're laying on the bottom dormant or it could be they've moved out into deeper water and we need to go out there and start probing that with our flies. But the fly lines give you the versatility to check and uh, check all parts of the water column effectively. All right, so I'm gonna try and get it into you. Okay. Boy, is this ever given a fight? Ugh. Trying to get that up. 
There's, that's your 40. Wow, I'm gonna tell you, that was exciting. Uh, my hands are still kind of shaking. Anytime I catch a big fish like that, I'm just blown away. Uh, I didn't expect it to be that big. It was absolutely pouring down. I'm still, as you can see, all wet. Bill and I were just kind of hunched down, casting in there. I was using uh, this big black clouser and it got a little mangled by the fish, but I cast it in there stripping it slow just kind of popping along and i suddenly felt the weight set the hook and then it went from deep in the bay there out to the open bay just like that which is another reason why it's great to have a large arbor and uh, a decent drag and i know a lot of people say oh you don't need it for for pike fishing and in general i would agree but they have very big pike here and i you want to have that drag and you want to have that large arbor because it ran right at me initially and I was stripping as fast as I could just to get that fish in you know that was a 40 to 42 inch fish and the girth on it was so large on that female that was 25 pounds I mean I, I it was hard to lift big heavy fish but that's what we're here for we're getting other fish but that's a fish of a lifetime Like all great fishing trips, time passed by quickly for Colin and I. Before we knew it, the float plane arrived to fly us back. We'd like to thank Hearst Air for inviting us up to one of their wonderful remote outposts. For anglers wanting a wilderness fishing adventure on a budget, this is a great option. You can learn more about this video Hearst Air and much more by visiting our website. Thanks for joining us on our adventure and we look forward to meeting you on the water someday. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time, so if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,